Hello, welcome to Gus McDowell Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. Today, we're playing Sonalus Combat Systems Fleet Command, an Operational Level Naval Combat Simulator. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to show your support with a donation, the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. In this campaign, Oil and Water, we look at a series of fictional naval operations undertaken by America and its allies in the Middle East, in the alternate 1990s world of Fleet Command. In this scenario, Iraqi Strike conduct a Tomahawk cruise missile strike against a secret chemical weapons plant. The borders between Kuwait, Iraq and Iran are marked in white. Kuwait has provided overflight rights, but any strike has a narrow window to avoid Iranian airspace. So, US aircraft will try to remain over the waters of the Gulf, and ships will attempt to fire their missiles over Iraqi airspace only. This scenario is loosely based on Operation Desert Strike. In September 1996, ships from the USS Carl Vinson Battle Group, including USS Laboon and USS Shiloh, in conjunction with B-52 bombers, escorted by F-14 Tomcats from USS Carl Vinson, launched 27 cruise missiles against Iraqi air defence targets in southern Iraq. A second wave of 17 was launched later that day. The missiles hit targets in and around Kut, Iskandaria, Nazaria and Talil. This was done in response to Saddam Hussein, the dictator of Iraq, attempting to launch an Iraqi military offensive campaign in the Kurdish town of Adil in Iraqi Kurdistan. Upon receipt of weapons release orders, conduct preemptive Tomahawk strike mission against Iraqi target. Detailed tasking message and targeting package will be supplied in follow-on communications. Do not engage civilian aircraft. This is the Northern Gulf. Persian or Arabian, take your pick. It is 0800 hours and the weather is sunny with clear skies. To the east is Iran. To the west is Saudi Arabia. Kuwait to the northwest. And to the north, Iraq. With the rivers Tigris and Euphrates creating the Mesopotamia, all land between the rivers. An American task group centered on the carrier Theodore Roosevelt is sailing north. To its northwest is a two-ship combat air patrol. It comprises two FA-18 Hornets. Operated by the United States as a fighter attack aircraft, the FA-18 Hornet has a maximum speed of 1,080 knots, maximum altitude of 50,000 feet, and a range of 1,800 nautical miles. Sensors include aircraft visual, aircraft radar medium range, and aircraft ESM medium range. In air-to-air -air warfare configuration, each FA-18 has seven AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air missiles, four AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, and guns. In different configurations, Hornets can also carry AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missiles, Harpoon missiles, or AGM-88 Harm air-to-surface missiles or high-speed anti-radiation missile. To the north of the task group is another pair of Hornets on combat air patrol. They have the same weapon loadout, An E-2 Hawkeye flies behind the task group. Operated by the United States as an airborne early warning aircraft, the E-2 Hawkeye has a maximum speed of 338 knots, maximum altitude of 37,000 feet, and range of 1,500 nautical miles. Sensors include aircraft visual, aircraft early warning radar long range, and aircraft electronic support measures long range. The Hawkeye is unarmed and vulnerable to enemy fighters. Let's examine the task group. This is the Monterey, CG-61. Operated by the United States as a Ticonderoga-class vertical launch system guided missile cruiser, she is 531 feet in length with a beam of 56 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors modelled in the game include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar long range, ship surface radar medium range and fire control radar. She carries 98 SM-2 surface air missiles, 
10 Tomahawk land attack missiles, 12 Mark 46 torpedoes, 10 Tomahawk anti-shipping missiles, 8 Harpoon missiles, 4 Mark 50 torpedo, guns and cannon. This is the Theodore Roosevelt CVN-71. Operated by the United States as a Nimitz-class nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, she is 1,020 feet in length with a beam of 235 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors include surface ESM, visual, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range, fire control radar, and active intercept. She carries 24 enhanced Sea Sparrow missile surface to air missiles and cannon. The Teddy Roosevelt's air group consists of 24 FA 18 Hornets, capable of anti surface warfare, anti air warfare, and strike rolls. Four EA 6B Prowler capable of anti-surface warfare and strike rolls. Three E-2 Hawkeyes. Ten S-3 Vikings capable of anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare rolls. And four SH-60F Seahawks capable of anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare rolls. Let's examine ground contacts. The northernmost contact is a radar emission. From its location, it is likely to be somewhere south of Baghdad. The southernmost contact is another radar emission near Basra, but we have more information on this area. There appear to be a number of administrative buildings, warehouses, and military-style hangar buildings. And the complex is defended by a surface-to-air missile site to the south. Very suspicious. It is possible that this is the secret chemical weapons plant. Let's examine the intelligence. Expect long-range air-to-surface cruise missile engagements at any time from Iraqi aircraft. The Iraqis have been known to use commercial air corridors to mask their movement. So, this mission is likely to involve both defensive counter-air and strike components. Let's begin. The Hawkeye's airborne early warning radar is on. It quickly detects a number of tracks. Classified track 7, 7, 9, 5, roger. The Northern Combat Air Patrol is tasked to visually identify the track northeast of the task group. Launch aircraft, affirmative out. Teddy Roosevelt orders two Hornets to launch. The carrier also brings two more Hornets to Alert 5, two to Alert 15, Roger out. and two to Alert 30, and orders a Seahawk to launch for anti-submarine warfare and search and rescue tasks. Launching aircraft, Wilco. A number of tracks are moving south. The first combat air patrol gets in position to approach them from a flank or behind. The tracks are out of range of Monterey's standard missile 2 surface dam missile. This aircraft is going low and slow, moving from Iran to Saudi Arabia and is unlikely to be a threat. It is identified as a Beechcraft turboprop. Can do. Roger, out. The Hornet resumes patrol and heads north to flank the other inbound tracks. Let's mark an air corridor around the Beechcraft. and modify the width to a generous 30 nautical miles.
High priority tasking received. High priority tasking received. But I need to resolve these unidentified inbound air tracks first. Missile launch. We'll do out. Can do out. One track is hostile and has launched a missile on the Hornets. They turn away to evade. The Hawkeye identifies the missile as an AA-12 Adder air-to-air -air missile. The Hawkeye identifies the launch platform as a Sukhoi Su-33 Flanker D. Almost certainly Iraqi. Monterey fires a single SM-2 Sepastan missile. Taking track 7, 7, 9, 8, Roger out. Weapon away, track 7, 7, 9, 8. The Adder passes Clark Island. It has lost track of the Hornets and runs out of fuel. Affirmative out. The Hornets head north. The Hawkeye detects two ASM launches from the unknown air track. The track is identified hostile, and Monterey launches another SM-2 SAM. Monterey also launches an SM-2 at the inbound missiles. The Hawkeye detects another Adder launch from the flanker D. We'll do, out. Roger. Affirmative out. Engage track seven eight zero six. We'll do. Weapon away. Track splash track seven. The flanker D is shot down. Do. The SM-2 closes the inbound missile. Hit! Monterey fires another two SM-2 at the second inbound missile. Hit! Hawkeye detects another launch of AS-4 Kitchen air -to surface missiles from a Tupolev 222M backfire bomber. The backfire is shot down. Monterey now engages the remaining kitchen missile. Taking track seven, eight, one, three. We'll go out. Missile away. Track seven, eight, one, three. Can do out. We'll do, Roger out. The Hornets move to intercept the other unidentified inbound tracks. Teddy Roosevelt has launched another two Hornets.
Hit! The three pairs of Hornets positioned for flanking intercepts. Can do out. Will do, Roger out. Let's speed up time. The Hornets now move in to conduct visual identifications. Affirmative out. Classify track seven seven nine seven out. Classify track seven seven nine nine. Will do. Can do out. The western track is neutral air, an Airbus A300. This is why we identify tracks before engaging them. Will do, Roger. Out. Out. However, the track in the centre is manoeuvring in a suspicious manner. Unlike the civilian aircraft, it is rapidly changing heading as though it is searching for something on radar. On Teddy Roosevelt, another pair of Hornets move from the lift to the flight deck. They move up to the catapult, ready at alert 5. An SH-60F Seahawk helicopter also readies to launch. The suspicious track is identified hostile and Monterey launches another SM-2 SAM. For now, the aircraft are avoiding air combat against hostile aircraft with equivalent combat capabilities. The hostile track is a Sukhoi Su-25 Frogfoot. This aircraft specialises in attacking surface targets. The SM-2 misses. The Hornets identify another neutral aircraft. Monterey engages the Frogfoot with another SM-2. The neutral aircraft is a Boeing 747. Again, this is why we identify tracks before engaging them. However, the tracks to the Hornets northeast are rapidly changing heading and behaving like fast jets. Can do, Roger, out. The second SM-2 destroys the Frogfoot. It plunges to the gulf below. Can do out. The Hornets move to intercept. Roger. 
specify track 7803. Will do, Roger out. This unidentified track is sitting behind the Boeing, making interception difficult. It will be dangerous to launch an SM-2 under these circumstances. Too much risk to the civilian airliners. Instead, the Hornets set up an intercept angle with no neutral aircraft to their front. The Hornets to the east move in to intercept from the rear. Track 7, 8, 0, 0. Identify as neutral air. air. They identify the track as neutral air. VID track 7, 8, 0, 3, out. It is an Airbus A300. Classify track 7, 8, 0, 2, out. Track 7803 The central track is confirmed hostile. The Hornets launch a single AMRAM. Splash track 7803 It splashes a Sukhoi Su-24 fencer. The neutral airliners are safe, and the task group out of immediate danger. Meanwhile, the carrier has launched a single SH-60F Seahawk for anti-submarine warfare and as a contingency to conduct search and air rescue missions for any downed pilots. Identify track 7802. Affirmative out, can do out. More inbound air tracks to identify. Teddy Roosevelt has three air stations. Two to the north for the combat air patrol. And one to the south for the Hawkeye. The Seahawk moves ahead of the task group. Identify track 7802. Will do. Affirmative out. ID track 7804, we'll do out. The Hornets move to intercept the inbound track. Out. Can do, Roger, out. VID track 7804, Roger. Track 7, 8, 0, 
The track is hostile. The Hornets immediately launch an AMRAM. And another. The hostile aircraft is another Sukhoi Su-24 Fencer. It is shot down. We'll do. Roger out. Another unidentified track is moving back to Iraqi airspace. Meanwhile, the Hornet's ESM has detected more inbound air contacts from the northwest. They move to identify. This is a good time to pause the action for now and come back to the operation in the next episode. In this episode, an American task group has been attacked repeatedly by Iraqi aircraft, but has conducted successful defensive counter-air, and has established air superiority over the northern Persian Gulf without loss to the Americans. In the next episode, the task group must conduct a Tomahawk land strike on a suspected chemical weapons factory in Iraq. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.